The tilt shift effect is used not only to make images appear to be further away from the camera and resize as if they're scaled models, but it's also used to give focus to an image so that our viewer is drawn into what we want them to see. In this tutorial, we'll be using Adobe's After Effects to do the tilt shift effect using only the native plugins that are in Adobe's After Effects. The following videos that you're looking at at the moment are examples of using the tilt shift effect on a video. Now, the tilt shift effect is also used a lot in photography, and it's generally used to make images appear as if they're models. And they're normally done from a higher perspective, looking down. However, using this, it allows us to focus on what we want the viewer to look at. So let's get into Adobe's After Effects and see how we can do that. Okay, so we're in After Effects now, and what we're gonna be doing is making the tilt shift effect. Now this tutorial will only use the presets and plugins already in Adobe's After Effects. Now I've already brought some footage in, which I filmed on my Panasonic GH4 camera, which films in 4K. Down below in the description area is a downloadable link, so you can download this. However, as I always say, make sure you go out there and film your own stuff and use your own projects because it makes it easier for yourself, especially if you're working on something and you need the tilt shift effect. But if you don't have time to do that and you just want to follow along, that's fine. Just simply download this video. So what it is, just simply a uh, video in a train yard with the uh, trains moving uh, in Brisbane, Australia. Now this is at Roma Street and I filmed this in the afternoon and I wanted to have a shift effect on this element. Now the shift effect itself is going to assist us in making sure that we can, there's, well there's two things you can do with the shift effect. One, it makes everything look smaller, almost like a model. Um, secondly, uh, it's great, especially if you want to focus or have your viewer focus on something that you want the viewer to keep an eye on. So for example, like the previous videos that you're seeing at the very beginning of this tutorial, uh, spider, for example, on the spider web, I wanted to focus on the mouth and the mouth moving and it's rolling around its food in its mouth. So to do that, I used the tilt shift effect in order to make the viewer focus on what was actually happening and not look around the surrounding stuff. So first of all, I'm just gonna get the 4K clip and I'm gonna drag it down, making a brand new composition. And then I'm gonna make some changes. So I'm gonna come over here and select composition settings. And I'm gonna come down to the presets and drop that down. And I'm gonna make it HD TV at 1080 with 29.97 as the frame rate. And then I'm going to leave everything else the same and select OK. I'm just gonna move the screen so everything fits in. So first of all, I might just press Z and zoom out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze everything that's 4K into this 1080. So everything that's 4K into 10. So I'm gonna select the video and press S for scale. And I'm going to select 50% for the scale. And that will bring the video in. Now you'll see it doesn't fit all the way in. I can squash it in. However, I don't wanna do that. It's a 4K image that's been shrunk down into 1K. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to layer new and we're gonna make a adjustment layer. And we're gonna leave the adjustment layer up the top. And this is where we're gonna put our effect in. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to layer new and we're gonna make a new solid. So I'm gonna make a new solid now, select that. I wanna make sure it's pure white. So let's drag it right up to the corner here and select okay. I'm just gonna call this feather. So this is what we're gonna be feathering. And I'm gonna make sure it's make comp size and select okay. Now what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that the solid is selected. I'm gonna come up now to layer and pre-compose. Now I wanna call this feather. And I wanna make sure that we move all attributes into the new composition. So let's select that and then select okay. And as you can see, it's made a new pre-composition. I'm gonna double select that and open that up and we're gonna make some adjustments in here. So let's come up to the mask tool, but before we do, let's select the layer. Now, if we didn't select the layer, it'll actually make a shape and we don't wanna make a shape. We just simply wanna make a mask. So I'm gonna select that now and I'm gonna come over to the edges here and draw a mask. Once I've done that, I'm gonna come down to the mask settings. I'm gonna make from add to subtract. 
And then I'm going to press F once, and that's going to bring up the mask feather. And we're going to adjust the feather now. So let's bring the feather out to say about, let's make it 150. Okay, so we can adjust these later on. So we'll make some finer adjustments. Let's go back to our composition. And as you can see, we've got our pre-composition layer in there and we've got our mask that we can see. So I'm just gonna put that below the adjustment layer and then I'm gonna hide it by unplucking the eye and it will make it disappear. And we'll go back up to the adjustment layer. Let's go up to effect. And then we're gonna go down to blur and sharpen and I'm gonna select camera lens blur. Now the first thing you'll see is there's a few different options that appear here. And before we do anything else, you'll notice that the image has now got a blur on there. So let's go up to the blur radius first of all, and let's make that 60%. And I'm happy with that blur at the moment. Now you, one thing you'll notice is there's a bit of fringing going on in our image on the top and the bottom. So we're gonna go back to our scale and we might just make it 60%. And as you can see, the fringing is now gone. We can make adjustments. We could even drop it down to 55, which may be more appropriate. And what we're looking for is to make sure that that fringing is gone. Okay, I'm happy with that. So 55% is the best option for this video. Let's select the adjustment layer again. And I'm gonna come down now to layer under the blur map. I'm gonna drop that down and I'm gonna select the feather, which is the pre-composition that we've created. Let's select that. And the first thing you'll notice, it will start to give us that tilt shift effect. Now we're gonna make some adjustments. You can see the focus seems to be right in the middle here. With the train, let's probably bring it down a bit. So I'm gonna come back into the pre-comp. I'm gonna select the mask. And I'm gonna drag the mask down a bit at the bottom. Maybe bring the top down just a, a tad. We can adjust the feather as well if we want to adjust the feather outwards. So I might just leave it at 140 for now and let's go back to our composition window and see what we've got. So what we're going to do now is just make sure the adjustment layer is selected. We're going to make some finer adjustments up here under our camera lens blur. So first of all, let's go to roundness and I'm going to just make that 90% and that gives it a little bit more of a feather. I'm going to come down to gain. I'm going to make that 14%. Just so we're gonna adjust the highlights in the video. And then I'm gonna come down to threshold and we're gonna drop that to 40%. And then with the saturation, we're gonna change that to 100. Therefore that it retains the saturation for the actual highlights themselves. So we'll select that as 100. And then finally with the edge behavior, we're going to select repeat edge pixels. So that is all the work that we need to do to actually do the tilt shift effect now, one thing we can do, because it's 4K, a 4K image, we can actually zoom in 100%. So therefore, we're gonna add some movement to our video by simply making some adjustments to the position and scale. So first of all, we're gonna select our video clip. Scale's already selected, so we're gonna set a keyframe at the very beginning. Press P for position, and we're gonna put a keyframe in that also. So therefore, both our position and scale are adjusted. We're gonna come down to the very end of our video so around 43 seconds on this. And I'm just gonna press N on my keyboard so you can cut the size of the clip down. And because we're at the very end now, we're gonna make some adjustments. So first of all, let's press S for scale, bring up scale. I'm gonna bring that into 100%. So bringing it back to the original size. And what we're gonna do now is press P on the actual video again for position. And I'm just gonna bring the clip. So the clip goes up. So we're gonna focus on the actual train as it's leaving, like so. I'm happy with that. So all we need to do, we're gonna do a RAM preview now. So pressing zero on the hard numerical keyboard on our keyboard, we'll do a render preview and see what it looks like. So all I need to do now is go up to file and we're gonna export it. So we're gonna render it. So add it to render queue. The shortcut for that is control M. We're gonna come down to output and I'm gonna make that a H.264. 
Form my options. I'm going to leave the profile as high. Level is 5.1. My target bit rate is 15. Maximum bit rate is 25 and select OK and OK again. Now, I'll just open that up again. We don't have any audio on there, so I'm not going to select audio. We're going to add that later on. And I'm going to select the output and find a location of where I want to select it. I'm just going to call this train final. Then simply select save. Once I'm happy with that, I select render. So when we've added all those steps up together, we have a nice looking tilt shift effect, which gives that really nice point of focus. So our viewer is looking at what we want them to look at where we have all the blurring on the outside. And it also allows us to make images look a little bit more further away from the camera. Now, if you like the videos, make sure you give us a thumbs up. If not, give us a thumbs down. As I always say, any feedback is good feedback. If you want to become a Film Master subby, it's pretty simple. Subscribe to the channel. You can follow us on Facebook and or on Twitter. And until next time, don't just film it, master it.